Hi, welcome to Surviving Schizophrenia with Stephen. My name is Stephen. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I want to tell you about a change in my life that brought me out of a very depressive state. The last three weeks have been very difficult for me, mainly the last two weeks before this last. I was feeling incredibly depressed and demoralized and lonely and sad. And this is nothing new for me. Since I fell ill in 2012, I was schizophrenic, I should say. Uh, I missed out on a lot of normal life stuff, right? I fell in sixth grade, so I didn't even finish middle school properly, which means I wasn't going to school really. I was not interacting with kids my age or kids at all. Our friends, I kind of just lost touch with them. And that went through high school until finally I went to an actual school. And that was like many years later. This took a long time before I was actually ready to go back to a school. And then I did make friends, but those friends were not friends anymore. And so now I'm starting to dwell more on that again, which is not good. But it's really hard not to dwell on the past for me right now. Especially because in every other way, I'm doing so much better. But that's the hard part for me. I'm doing so well, right? I have recovered greatly with my schizophrenia in the last few years. I'm feeling better, I have more energy. All in all, I'm doing way better mentally, physically, not quite emotionally though. And that's because I'm dwelling on the past and now that I'm well enough, I can look back more and realize what I've missed and what I could have potentially had the opportunities to do had I had a normal experience. In high school, I ended up stopping going to that school after a few years. It was becoming too stressful for me. And so, I stopped and I got my GED instead. And that was the last time I schooling. So I've never really had many opportunities to meet people, especially my own age, in the last, what, 12 years even, aside from that short period at high school. That's really hard for me to deal with. And some of the loneliness side comes into where it's like, because I missed out on so many opportunities like that, I've also missed out on opportunities to have a relationship, a romantic relationship, I should say. And that is about the most depressing thing I can deal with, right, or I can think of right now for me. It's very hard for me to deal with that. And it's very, it, that, that's really the biggest part that's weighing on me right now is the fact that I mean, had I not had schizophrenia, I probably would have had a girlfriend by now, I'm sure. And because I have schizophrenia and had schizophrenia from a very young age, I missed out on those opportunities for the most part. I say for the most part because I may have been able to do something at some point, maybe, but at the same time, I wasn't well enough to know how. I wasn't well enough to know how to actually interact with people my own age, much less girls my own age. And all of that makes it very hard to deal with right now. Even though I'm doing very well in every other way, this aspect of my life is like the one part that I'm not doing very well with. And that's making me very depressed because of it. About two weeks ago, I recorded a video that I think is <laughs> too much. I recorded it and I watched it over after I recorded it and I was not able to edit it. I was not able to even watch it after that anymore. That was gonna, I was gonna show this video on my YouTube channel, but I didn't. And I've not been able to work because of this for the last couple of weeks now. 
till today. And that video, even though I believe in being very transparent here on YouTube, which uh, I think is important to destigmatize schizophrenia and actually help, right? I have to not hide anything nor sugarcoat anything. So I'm going to show you part of that video. Not the whole thing. It's, I, I don't think it's necessary to show the whole thing, but I will show you part of it right now. And then I'll come back after and I will explain a little more and also talk about the more positive aspect of what changed since and what I am doing now that is helping my depression and is helping me move forward and move on aside even being like this lonely and depressed because since I recorded the video which I'm going to show you part of right now things have gotten way better so I'm going to show it to you right now I'll catch up with you in a second Hi, welcome to Surviving Schizophrenia with Stephen. My name is Stephen. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Oh, man. I'm having a very rough time right now. And it's causing me a lot of depression and a lot of sadness. And I, I'm just really sad and lonely, honestly. I don't know how this won't be an upbeat video. I try to always have nice upbeat videos on my channel as best as I can, even when I'm talking about more difficult things. But this is, it's been really hard to be this lonely, you know? I felt ill with schizophrenia when I was 12 years old. I'm 24 now, it's been a long time. And I've never had a romantic relationship in my life. It's not something I talk about much, it's not something I think about much until about two days ago when it just hit me. For some reason, really hard. And I, I, well, I think part of that is I'm doing so well in every other way right now. Mentally, aside from how I'm feeling right now, I'm very good. Uh, physically, I'm in pretty good shape. I've been walking a lot. I was feeling great. My last few videos, I think, have been pretty positive. I, I was feeling really good. But not right now. Because <laughs> I, I don't know how else to explain it. Like, I don't know if I'm doing a good job here making this video, but I wanted to show what it's like in real time, as I have done before, when I feel the effects of my schizophrenia. Right now, it's extreme loneliness and the sadness that I don't know if anything like that will change anytime soon. So as you saw from the video, I was in a very dark place. I was very sad. And that was how it was for days. I would go to sleep feeling absolutely miserable. I'd wake up in the morning feeling worse. I would just go through the day, going through the motions essentially. I would stop doing things I liked for the most part. Video games, for example, I, I love video games, but I stopped even doing that as much. At times I was just staring, kind of watching a show in the back and I just, just enveloped in sadness and my depression. It hasn't been that bad for me since 2012 when I fell ill. This was a very dark point for me and I haven't been in that kind of a place for the better part of 10 years, maybe 12 now, which was also scary to be that sad and that depressed for that long. I mean, part of me was prepared, like, if this gets really bad, I, I may have to go back to the hospital and be in a safe place, which luckily did not need to happen. 
after a week or a week and a half or so of that deep depressive state, something changed. Now I'm still dealing with depression, but things are getting better. Really what happened was in my mind, it clicked. And I've had these kinds of thoughts before when it came to stress, but this was way more serious even. I can be this depressed and do nothing or worse than nothing and end up in the hospital. Or I can try to change something and move on. And so I did. And I'm doing way better now. So basically I decided I need to start changing stuff in my life. If I want to have friends and a relationship in the future, I can't do that just moping around my house doing absolutely nothing really. I have to do something, right? Whatever that is. And I thought about that for a while. I started going on really long walks actually, longer than usual. And I've gotten a lot more walks in since and longer walks. Yesterday I went for a seven mile walk. That's something I couldn't have done before. And on these walks, I have been thinking and contemplating and working on figuring out how I can essentially better myself to have a better future myself. And like I said, I can't do that if I'm just moping around the house and I can't do that if I am stuck in that rut. So I've been walking. And I was thinking, I wanted to change it up as well in my, um, the fun part about my life, right? And instead of just playing video games all day long, only games, right? And watch some TV, I guess. I have now turned to a, well, a hobby I haven't really actually done in a very long time, nor enjoyed in a very long time since before I felt ill with schizophrenia, and that's reading. I think after I fell ill with schizophrenia, it was very hard to read because reading takes a lot more energy, at least for me, than say playing a game. But in playing a game, I can escape my reality and go to this world where I can either be the hero, right, or do stuff outside of real life. But reading, I also have to imagine, right? I have to comprehend what I'm reading and the words in front of me. And that was really, really hard for me to do for a long time. And then I didn't enjoy it anymore. So it was even harder. As of about, I think it's like 11 days or so, uh, I have just been reading. And well, I've watched TV as well, but reading. And I haven't played a game in that long, like 11 days or so, maybe seven, a little over a week. And I have actually found that very helpful for me to try something, not completely new, but new for me for a while, right? It's been a long time. And that's been really great. I found reading has helped sharpen my mind as well and I think my vision's even gotten better and it's helped improve my mood as well and it's been very I guess stimulating for my brain too to read because it's a lot it takes a lot more brain power to read than to watch a tv show or play a game and yeah I feel way better now and now that I'm trying to change I don't know what to call it myself. I feel better. And I know that in the future, if I keep this up, I might have a relationship one day and more friends someday. And I know things will get better if I focus on this kind of thought process as opposed to any kind of negative and depressive thoughts. And I still have those thoughts and still that depression, but now I'm counteracting it with all the things I've mentioned and it's working very well and I feel way better. I did all this 
just by working through it myself and changing my thought process. I didn't change my medication. I was considering that when things were very bleak for me. About two weeks ago, I was considering, do I need to change my medication or anything? I didn't. I did take more of my anxiety medication when I was going through that, but that was it. And I'm very happy that I worked through it. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to for a bit there, but I did. And I'm very happy about myself for having done that because now I have an even better outlook on life than I did before. All this happened about three weeks ago and I'm even more excited for my future. I've been posting a lot of videos lately about how I'm feeling better right and looking more at my future and stuff, but the thing with schizophrenia is it's not always up, right? Sure, things were going up and up and up for me, but then I got hit with this massive depression episode, I guess. And that's part of how schizophrenia goes, you know, it's not always one direction. And also, it's not always one direction and then down, and further down, it can you can go back up. And I've seen that in my life where it's never an up or just downhill situation. It always fluctuates and it goes up and down. It's periods of pretty good moods and pretty happy, and then it's periods of depression. I have found with my more positive attitude and my now outlook on life, the lows are not as low. And I tend to be up more positive and happier more often. Yeah. So I think that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was maybe helpful and showed some more insight into what living with schizophrenia and actually surviving it is like. And I hope you have a happy and healthy rest of your day. And I hope to see you in the next video.